Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not coming back now. And the thing is, well, it's uh, here, it sure is hot outside today. It's raining up here around 100 degrees today. Um, yeah, it's 100 degrees outside right now. Currently, I just checked the temperature and everything. Um, I'm going to ride this water go and head up to the back store and back on the end. Uh, anyway, to get right to the point, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, well, okay, guys. Um, I'll talk about anxiety again. Once again, okay. Anxiety, everybody has regular general, generalized anxiety, okay? But, but everybody doesn't have. Okay, what I've been thinking about, talking about for a long time is how sporadically, this is sporadically amusing this time, okay? Once in a while, okay? Okay, sometimes you'll be like, well, let me give you an example. You could be in a restaurant, right? Okay, this is what I'm talking about, agoraphobia. That's where it comes in. Okay, guys. Sporadically means like once in a while, right? Okay, example. Okay, let's say you're dipping some mashed potatoes and gravy, which is my favorite food, guys. For God's sakes, heaven forbid, I love mashed potatoes and gravy. My favorite. I'm guilty, guys, for that. No fifth amendment on that. Okay, chicken too, naturally. I love all I can eat chicken. Okay, but what the point I'm trying to get to, okay, listen to this. Okay, let's say you're fine one moment. Okay, the next moment you get dizzy. Okay, you don't know why you're getting dizzy. You just think it's an ear infection. You see right in here. Right in here, you see, because you got the equilibrium. The doctor looks in your ears. I mean, for many, many years, you're looking at my ears. I've had problems with my ears in the past. I have had problems with my ears. Okay, no, no question about that. But this has nothing to do, this part has nothing to do with Dr. Sid with my, uh, what is it called? Yeah, dizzy spells. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, okay, well, that's where the panic attacks come in, guys. Okay, that's why I was prescribed. Okay, like, anxiolytic. That's the proper way of saying it. saying a nice terminology instead of saying, you know, which I want to say, Valium or Xanax or Clonopin, okay? Clonopin's for restless leg syndrome. It's for a lot of different things. You can't just look at Clonopin and say it's a nasty drug. Okay, Clonopin is for seizures. Capra is also for seizures. That's K-A-P-P-R-A as Capra. That's not a controlled subject, substance I know of. <clears throat> okay. But clonopin is controlled substance. Xanax is controlled nasty word because the psychiatrist calls it nasty, whatever. Kiss my booty. I'm sorry. No offense to you, Dr. Mind, or whatever. I know you're a doctor or whatever. Whatever degree you got, you got it, whatever. Uh, and psychi psychiatry or whatever. But I'm sorry to tell you this, Dr. Mind, but I'm going to tell you anyway, in a nice way. Okay, what's helped me may not be helping your patients, but it's helping me, okay? Okay, that nasty thing that you're talking about, Xanax, right? Okay, that, if it wasn't for Xanax, for Christ's sakes, that you got, that they invented, or whatever, you know, the man made, uh, you know, these drugs, these synthetic drugs, or whatever, a lot of them are freaking have side effects. You want to get right down to the point, Dr. Mind. Kepper has side effects just as much as anything else does. Trazodone has side effects. Uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Okay, the ones you spray in your mouth. Okay. Nostril, Nardel, and all this other stuff. I can go, go on and go on just like you can, Dr. Mind. I'm being honest. Xanax is, yes, I agree with you. Is for panic attacks, not around the clock use. Yes, I understand. You take it only when you necessary to have a panic attack. Like the example I was talking about the mashed potatoes and gravy. Not having a panic attack just because the mashed potatoes and gravy are exciting, but maybe the panic attack excited you so much from the who knows. I mean, I mean, God knows. I mean, there's still research in the brain today. They don't even know what's causing all these panic attacks. All they know is chemicals in the brain, serotonin, 
serotonin, excuse me, I'm sorry, dopamine, norepinephrine, all these stuff in the brain, okay, blood, blood pressure problems, um, for God's sakes, um, there's so many I can ramble on and on and on and on, okay, but let's get these, number one, I agree with you, there's a lot of these drugs, they try to get you to try first, okay, listen to me real quick, okay, Dr. Mind, okay, and all the other doctors out there, listen to me real carefully, I've been through them all, okay, I've been through the Zoloft, I've been through, I've been through so many different ones they've tried, okay, I've been through Paxil, junk, okay, you know what I call junk, I've been through the six week, six week program, okay, didn't feel a damn thing, okay? I felt the same way I did when I first started the drug six, six, seven weeks later. Let's go that high. The seventh week, I felt as shitty as I did on the fourth week, okay? Do you, do you know when the drug starts kicking in after four to six weeks? Is what they say, the Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, um, Zyprexa. Or, I mean, that's a different category, though. That's nothing to do with that, you know, Paxil stuff. So I practice those an antipsychotic drug. We're getting in a different family now, okay? Not in the serotonin family. Okay, well, abutrin, as they say, was for quit smoking, but it's also used for, you know, for, you know, antidepressant use. Okay, trazodone you know, is Desiree. A lot of people don't know that trazodone is what it is the other brand for Desiree. D E S E R. Y A Y L Desiree, okay? And there's another one, Trinexine, you know, Trinexine, or I can't say it very good, but it's T R T R A N X E N E, okay? Trinexine, okay? It's a benzodiazepine, it's good for sleep, guys. 15 milligrams, they got 7.5 milligrams, they got 15 milligrams, and it's really terrific for sleep, and it, it, it's like the restoril in a way. It's very addicting, though. Highly addicting. I can ask Dr. Lund if you don't believe me. Very addicting. Okay, yes. Um, I understand where you're going with this, Dr. Mind, okay? Okay, um, number one, let's straighten something out real quick. Okay, real quick. I'm sorry to bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Because the truth has got to come out sooner or later. Michael Jackson, listen to me carefully, guys. Michael Jackson did not die of Xanax. He did not die of Valium. He did not die of codeine. He did not die of all these other drugs that he's been taking for years. Because if he would have died of those drugs, guys, then he would have died about 30 years ago, wouldn't he? He would have taken these drugs for more than 30 years, probably. For Christ's sake, think about it, guys. If you had died from Xanax, guys, wouldn't you think you died 30 years ago? He didn't die until he got administered that white propofol. Okay, which is, you know, you know, not fentanyl, but it's propofol, you know? Right? Exactly. He, he would have died if it wasn't for that, okay? He was, what happened is it was kept going too much, okay, he might have did it himself, it possibly he might have did something himself to where it opened up wide and kept going, where the doctor didn't, I'm not saying you're guilty, doctor, okay, listen, but you are guilty for all the equipment that wasn't there the night that it should have been, I mean, you administered this medication, doctor, listen carefully. Okay, I'm not the jury, but I'll tell you one thing. I didn't see all the evidence, but I listened to the case. The only thing I see you guilty for right now is not having the right, okay, all the right tactics, good stuff, all the right monitoring systems, a hospital setting, not no room setting. Okay, number two mistake is you didn't, I mean, when you do CPR on a person, please put them on, please have them on a flat surface on the ground. A cardiologist, especially, should be trained for this. If paramedics are trained for it, what makes you think that a cardiologist can't be trained for it? 
I, I know you're upset during, during the, doing CPR, okay? I mean, for Christ's sakes, even I know how to do C, I mean, CPR before I do check the forces. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I know the proper procedure 10 years before I started medication, uh, studying medication, okay? What's to do with my mom? Well, I told you about my mom, so I saved her life. I'm not saying it's going to save everybody. What happened is he, he, he got distressed, okay? Cardiac distress. His heart couldn't take any more because it stopped beating because he had the propofol. Too much the propofol was going. The Xanax didn't stop his heart. Okay, guys, think about it logically. Maybe a combination could have did it, but think about the strongest drug dynamic. Pharmaceutical co-dynamics. Okay? Dynamics. What does that word mean? Doctor mind. Okay, tell me what the word means. Okay, it's very easy and simple, okay? Doctor mind, you should know what that word means. Pharma Pharma okay, codynamics, you know what it means. Right, the strength of the how medications peak. Okay, how strong the drug can, how strong the drugs are. Okay, to a peak point two within two hours. And besides that, that propofol doesn't even last two hours when it gets administered. You wake up. What happens when drugs stop with propofol? Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? You wake up. It's like that. Okay. So, if the propofol was turned off, if the valve was turned off, that little thing, okay, was turned off of the IV or whatever, you want to say your defense was, you have been fine. He'd be alive today, rocking and rolling, okay? And still be doing Billie Jean, okay? Doing all that other stuff. You wouldn't have all these family problems, okay? Look. Doctors make mistakes. This is well. You're only human. I understand, but it's not right. You, you. I mean, doctor, mind. I'm not saying you. Okay, listen. Get. Don't get this wrong. I am saying you killed my Jackson. Okay, don't get the wrong idea. Because this girl attacking you about something else. Okay, I'm talking about the other doctor that you no, know, was with him that night. Cardiologist. Okay, knew the basics. Should know the basics about you know how to have them on the floor doing you know. Compressions and everything. Have the right equipment in the setting, okay? That's a failure right there. They fail you on all those things. A pulse ox doesn't save your life. For Christ, for Christ's sakes. What in the hell is a pulse ox going to do, guys? Let's be honest with each other. Let's say a life crash emergency happens, okay? What you did. What the hell is it going to do without a defibrator? defibrator? I mean, I can't even say, the defibrillator, I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry. What the hell is it going to do without the, that, without jumpstarting your heart? Nothing. You're doing nothing. All you're doing is wasting time, and the longer the patient is out, the longer the, cr the crash of the of patient is dead, brain dead, epoxic, I think it's called epoxia, epoxic with no oxygen, the brain and all those other toxic, yeah. Very de deadly, dangerous. No oxygen in the brain at all, okay? Too late. You cannot bring back person is, is highly in a toxic, yeah. You know? Toxic. Okay, so this is a little bit of education of what a person should not do. You should not bring pro propofol home and hook it up to yourself and, you know, take it on yourself. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care who you, if you're the president of the United States, I don't care if you're Obama and you want to take it on home and get myself a shot of some uh, good old stuff. Morphine is different, okay? Morphine doesn't do that to you. Morphine is, well, it is prescribed just like any, any other painkiller. Okay, now, if the, I think it's a little going too, a little bit too far with this medication pullage, okay? I think that whoever is behind it, if it's Obama, which I think it is, Obama is cutting Medicare as we speak right now of some odd billions and trillions of dollars just for kickbacks of money that goes in his pocket, I've heard. It was just on the news on TV just a while ago. Okay? 
Now, if he's doing that, do you think you want to elect him as president again? Who in the hell? Who in the hell is going to make you a good president? Sorry, no, no disrespect. But let's think about this for a second. If you pull Percocets off the shelf, if you pull all the cancer drugs off the shelf, you pull all these drugs, minor drugs, compared to propofol, okay, off the shelf. Okay, because per oh, taking a Percocet, give me a break. Taking one Percocet is not going to knock you out and make you go into a freaking uh, sleep, just like propofol does. It does not do that. Sorry, guys. You could take four or five Xanaxes. They still won't knock you out. Some people can, okay? Especially Michael Jackson. If you're used to it, if you, okay, the record shows and reflects of his history, okay? It claims in his history he could take up to 20 of those blues, okay, which is 20 milligrams, one setting of, of not Oxycontin, but Xanax. And it won't infect him. He said they can be a little bit sleepy, okay, a little bit sleepy. They still be able to do what he in dance realm, dance floor, for Christ's sakes. Now, if you gave him propofol, on the other hand, he could not dance for shit. There ain't no way he could be able to do the. Do the moonwalk and do all that shit half half asleep going do 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 you know he might fall or something like that I mean with probably fall in his hands there ain't no other way the hell he's gonna pop I mean inject yourself probably fall do the moonwalk at the same time he moonwalk moonwalk himself to sleep I mean then he'll wake up and say you know thriller you know whatever I mean I'm not trying to make a joke out of this but I'm saying being serious here man. I mean, yeah, Xanax is different, and it's Atlantic. You take that, and, we'll, and you'd be just fine. That's good for nerves. But it's not right to make other people. Here's the bottom line. Okay, I'm going to make this quick and easy. Simple, guys. You should not pay, make people suffer, the ones that need the medication, just because famous people are dying. Okay? That's what I'm getting to, okay? Just because Anna and Nicole... Okay, Corey Haim, the ones in the spotlight we hear about. I'm sorry, I mean, God bless her soul, rest in peace. All the people that died of these drugs or whatever, I'm taking Xanax right now. I'm speaking to you guys, and I'm clear. Okay, so tell me that I'm wrong. Okay, just go ahead and try to challenge me. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm taking a medication that my doctor prescribes that I need. Okay? Otherwise, you get high blood pressure and panic attacks. Okay? Sorry. And that's what I, that's what it works for me. If it wasn't for that, I would be in a lot of trouble. And yes, I do have thyroid, no thyroid right now as I speak. That's probably why my voice is making weird sounds. Okay? A little bit. Okay? Because I have a thyroidectomy. No thyroid at all. We we'll have to control that my own calcium. I have to take my pills, calcium pills, 600 milligrams twice a time, divided by two, twice by two, okay, times two, I mean, okay, 1,200 milligrams per day, whatever it calls for, if I'm low on calcium, I'll start feeling numb around the lips, okay, just like a diabetic, so feeling sick to the stomach, okay, the bottom line is, I mean, I got a short story to make the short and sweet, okay, I know I, I made it sound, I said this earlier, I want to straighten this for the record. For all you patients out there, please, if you ever, ever get pulled in a doctor's office and could get called Michael Jackson, please do something about it. Report it. We didn't report it. We didn't do nothing about it. Cindy got pulled into Okay, for, for example, we go in there. Okay, Cindy goes in to kids to see a, this doctor that she'd never seen before. It's a new, brand new doctor because... We didn't have a doctor. We left our doctor, okay, you see, a long time ago because he was getting weird and stuff. He was getting where he was getting a little bit senile, I believe. Okay, we believe, okay, our opinion. We are allowed because we're seeing a doctor. We do what we want because our insurance said we can as long as we're seeing the doctor. Okay, the bottom line is, is this doctor called her Michael Jackson? He used a girl's name into a guy's name okay just because of what she's taken Xanax she's taken Percocet okay back then she was taking Percocet for pain 
Okay, and I'll tell you what the difference is. She has a bulging disc. It's sticking out of her back. Okay, it's just like sticking a knife in your back in between your ribs or in between the, the gap inside of your back where the S1 is at, okay? And just leaving a knife inside there without, I mean, bleeding half to death and pain. And you mean tell me that you can't have Percocet or Oxycodone? Give me a break, doctor. The doctor who ever said that she's like Michael Jackson is probably the one that's using drugs or selling drugs. Before you start accusing people of something, we you need to fit, I mean, start going through the amendments. Hey, so you know what? We have the rights, the 12th Amendment. We got the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Third Amendment, all the way to the 12th Amendment. We have our, I mean, I mean, God. We have all these amendments, rights, in America, the USA, we're supposed to be a free country. That's what the 4th of July, you know, is supposed to be for. Funding games. Not, I'm not saying funding games, Pop Percocet. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, in other words, a fair hearing, and we shouldn't have to explain ourselves why we're taking medication, okay? Okay, if they have records in front of them, they know why already, why she's taking the medication. They shouldn't say question and do a lawyer thing on her and say why are you taking this medication i mean if they do she can explain to him tell like she tried to do and not get accused of being doing the moonwalk and michael jackson for god's sakes if she was michael jackson i'm, I'm pretty sure that doctor would took thousands of dollars from her so here's a prescription i walked out of there i was pissed off i was mad I told that doctor, I said, I'm going to have your license. I said, you refuse her? I said, I got a bottle here from the previous doctor proving she's on Xanax. And if she's she's out right now, if she if she run out now, and she has one seizure in your office or anywhere near your office, it's your ass. Because she signed the papers and you signed the papers, you are going to start seeing her as a patient. And if you don't see her as a patient, I mean, if you prescribe or something else, which he did, okay, then he finally went ahead and gave her Xanax because of me. I told them, if you don't start giving her Xanax, that's it, you know, we're going to sue. So he gave her Xanax, he gave her Percocets, he didn't like to, okay, but you know he did, he made sure that we weren't seen again, so he did that one time. I didn't want to go back anyway, because... He was afraid of losing his license because I got on the phone and called my uncle, which, which is a lawyer. He said it's all BS. Okay. It's all controversy. In other words, every doctor is scared to write script. It's all stupid, all over movie stars. Okay. It's how you use it. Just like Dr. Drew said. Okay, a person is allowed to kill themselves as long as they don't tell anybody they're going to kill themselves in California. You know that, right? And they're within their limits, they're allowed to do it. I'm not saying she's going to do that, okay? But I'm just saying, for instance, a person is allowed to do that, but they're not allowed to take the medication that they want to take, right? Or they've been on for years, many, many years. Just go ahead and jack them around and take their medication away from them and make them suffer, right? All because we can send people to war to die. And we send people to war to get shot, and uh, they can use the opium over there, to, I mean, for pain. The heroin over there, for Christ's sakes, why not? But you mean to tell me that you, you can, I mean, this government has the right to, I mean, to take our freaking medication away? I don't think so. If that makes any sense to me, let me know. Hit me up anytime you want, guys. I'm not trying to be mean or nasty, I'm just trying to tell the truth here. The government we live in is not, it's not, it's not, it don't even seem free. It seems like Megan's law is coming into effect. Okay. If that ever happens, that means the government owns you. They own you anyway when you ever go to the army. But you ain't, you ain't going to want no tanks to come to your house. You ain't going to want all these people to come to your house and break your Fifth Amendment, break your Fourth Amendment. Break all your amendments that, you know, oh, you know, God, it's terrible. The amendments were wrote for a reason. Your freedom, okay? 
freedom of expression, freedom of everything, you know? Thomas Jefferson, matter of fact, that's who it is. Okay? Okay, I'm enough's enough. I had enough of this talk, and I'll come back and talk a little bit more later on after we think of some more ideas. You guys all, God bless, and just for today, you know, you take care. This is nothing against Obama. I just had to, I'm allowed to protest. I'm allowed to speak my freedom because I live in America, not Russia. Okay, and plus, I think people should be able to speak their peace in Russia, too. Okay, no matter where you are in this world, I think they have just as much right to speak as I do. That's my, what I believe, okay? But I'm going to say later on, peace, God bless, stay healthy, and try your best. Because I know I got, for God's sakes, I'm trying my best. Good later on. Bye-bye. See you.